Regal Park, New York, 1958. It was summer. I remember I was 10 or 11. Last one to the schoolyard is a rotten egg. I was roller skating with Howie and Steve till my skate came loose. Ow! Hey, wait up, fellas. Rotten egg. Ha ha ha. Wait up. <laughs> my father was in front fixing something. Artie, come to hold this a minute while I saw. <laughs> Why do you cry, Artie? Hold better on the wood. I, I fell and my friend skated away w without me. He stopped sighing. Friends? Your friends? If you lock them together in a room with no food for a week, then you could see what it is, friends. My father bleeds history, mid-1930s to winter 1944. Chapter 1. The Sheik. I went to see my father in Rigo Park. I hadn't seen him in a long time. We weren't that close. Papa! Oi, Artie, you're late. I was worried. It's a shame Francois couldn't, also didn't come. Mm-hmm. She sends regards. He had aged a lot since I saw him last. My mother's suicide and his two heart attacks had taken their toll. Mala! Look who's here! Artie! He was remarried. Mala knew my parents in Poland before the war. She was a survivor, too, like most of my parents' friends. Hi, Artie. Let me take your coat. The dinner is on the table. Ah, Mala, a wire hanger you give him? I haven't seen Artie in almost two years. We have plenty of wooden hangers. They didn't get along. After dinner, he took me into my old room. Come, we'll talk while I pedal. It's good for my heart, the pedaling. But tell me, how is it by you? How is going the comics business? I still want to draw that book about you. The one I used to talk to you about, about your life in Poland and the war. It would take many books, my life, and no one wants anyway to hear such stories. I want to hear it. Start with mom. Tell me how you met. Better, you should spend your time to make drawings what will bring you some money. But if you want, I can tell you. I lived then in Setowajowa, a small city not far from the border of Germany. I was in textiles, buying and selling. I didn't make much, but always I could make a living. I was at that time young and really a nice, handsome boy. I had a lot of girls, what I didn't even know that would run after me. Hello, Vladek. This is Ulik. A friend of mine, Lucia Greenberg, would like to be introduced to you. The Sheik. People always told me I looked just like Rudolph Valentino. Eventually, I took Lucia to dance. Do you live alone? Yes. I have a small apartment. My parents moved to Sosnowick. I'd like to see it sometime. Maybe sometime. Wherever we went, I looked around, and Lucia Greenberg would also be there. Vladik, which way are you going? Just to the market. Me too. Let's walk together. But Pop, Mom's name was Anna Zeilberberg. All this was before I met Anya. Just listen, yes? Why don't you ever invite me to your home? Are you ashamed of it? She kept insisting me to show her my apartment. So finally, I invited her. Everything's so neat and clean. I like to keep things in order. You must have another girlfriend who cleans for you, no? No. I didn't want to be more closer with her, but she really wouldn't let me go. Was she the first girl you, uh... Yes, we were more involved, so like the youths here today. We saw each other together for maybe three or four years. Let's get engaged, Vladik. It's late. I'll take you home. Not yet, please. Come on, your parents would worry. Her family was nice, but had no money, even for a dowry. Well, every holiday I went to visit my family. It was maybe a journey of 35 or 40 miles. Cousin Vladik, it's good to see you again. Listen, there's a girl in my class. I want you to meet us tomorrow. Her name is Anya. She's incredibly clever, from a rich family, a very good girl. The next morning, we all met together. My cousin and Anya spoke sometimes in English. How you like him? He's a handsome boy and seems very nice. They couldn't know I understood. 
Well, I promised to be home early. I'll leave you two alone. You know, you should be careful speaking English. A stranger could understand. You, you know English? Did you study it in school? I had to quit school at about 14 to work, but I took private lessons. I always dreamed of going to America. It's a shame you have to return to Tsetschewa so soon. Yes, but I have my business. Have you a phone at home? As soon as I came back to Setsoachoa, she called once a day, twice, every day. We talked. And then she started writing to me such beautiful letters. Almost nobody could write Polish like she wrote. I visited a couple times to her. She sent me a photo. I bought a very nice frame. It passed maybe a week until Lucia again came and saw the photo. I'm going to get engaged to her, Lucia. Psh! And look at what a beauty you picked. Looks aren't everything, Lucia. It isn't good for either of us that you keep coming up here. We have to plan for our futures and forget her. Let me make you happy. It was not so easy to get free from Lucia. Mom wasn't that attractive, huh? Not so like Lucia. But if you talked a little to her, you started loving her more and more. One time we walked into the director from her school. You're very lucky, Mr. Spiegelman. You don't know what a girl you're getting. I've had many students, but never one as sensitive and intelligent as Anna. Yes, that's why I picked her. I wish you could visit me in Setsuchoa. I'd like to show you off to my friends. I've begged my mother to let me go, but she's so religious and old fashioned. She would never allow me to go back to a bachelor's apartment. Anya's parents were anxious she should be married. She was 24. I was then 30. Oh, my parents would like you to come to dinner tomorrow night. The Zalberberg family was very well off. Millionaires. The Zalberbergs had a hosiery factory, one of the biggest in Poland. But when I came into their house, it was so like a king came. Welcome, welcome. Anya, Ladak is here. Make yourself comfortable while I help with dinner. To see what a housekeeper she was, I peeked into Anya's closet. Everything is neat and straight, just the way I like it. But what's this? Pills? I wrote down every pill. If she was sick, then what did I need it for? Dinner is ready. Later, a friend, a druggist, told me the pills were only because she was so skinny and nervous. How about some more gefilte fish, Vladik? So, to make a long story short, by the end of 1936, we were engaged and I moved from Setsuchoa to Sosnowik. Ah, here I forgot to tell something from before I moved to Sosnowik, but after our engagement was made. One evening, the bell rang. Lucia? What are you doing here? I'm on my way out. I, I'll come with you. No, you can't come with... Please, Vladik. She fell on the floor and held strong my legs. Don't run away. I saw now that I went too far with her. I ran out to my friend who introduced us. He went to calm her down and took her home. I didn't hear more from Lucia, but also I stopped hearing from Anya. No telephone calls, no letters, nothing. What happened? Hello, Mr. Mrs. Zalberberg. Could I speak to Anya? She says she won't speak to you. But why? She got a letter from someone in Setsuchoa. My God, it says the worst things in the world about you. Well, I can't convince her on the phone. I'll come down by train on Friday, after work. It wasn't even a holiday, but I went anyway to Sosnowik. So tell me, Anya, what have I done that's so horrible? You should know. Just read this. I don't even want to see it. Just tell me who wrote it, or better yet, I'll tell you. Lucia Greenberg, right? It's just signed your secret friend, L. It says you have a very bad reputation in Setsuchoa, that you have lots of girlfriends, and that you're marrying me for my money. Ah, Anya, you should know me better. Ask anyone in Setsuchoa about my character. Lucia is an old girlfriend who won't leave me alone. She means nothing at all to me. And after much talking, I convinced her. So I moved to Sosnowik at the end of 1936, and February 14th, 1937, we were married. And now, some vodka to toast the young couple. I moved into one of father-in-law's two apartments. He owned both, and he gave to me part ownership and a very beautiful gold watch for a wedding gift. 
But this, what I just told you about Lucia and so, I don't want you should write this in your book. What? Why not? It has nothing to do with Hitler, with the Holocaust. But Pop, it's great material. It makes everything more real, more human. I want to tell your story, the way it really happened. But this isn't so proper, so respectful. I can tell you other stories, but such private things I don't want you should mention. Okay, okay, I promise.